So I recommend that every developer do some kind of public speaking. You grow professionally and gain authority, you grow personally, and you end up expanding your network and meeting great people. So in this video, I'm going to take you through everything you need to do to get started speaking in public as a developer. Okay, so step one is start small and local. As someone that has run meetups of my own, I can tell you that probably the biggest thing and the biggest pain for people that organize meetups and conferences is finding speakers and finding good speakers. So if you reach out to a local meetup organizer, the odds are that they are going to want you to speak because they're trying to figure out who's gonna speak next month and they haven't done it yet. This is probably the trickiest thing. When I ran meetups, it was the biggest pain to get everything set up and booked. And so if you can reach out and maybe propose a few topics, then that's gonna go a long way and that's a great way to get started. So go online, go to meetup.com and search in your local area for developer meetup groups. Likely things have changed since the pandemic. I think a lot has moved online, but that doesn't mean that there aren't still opportunities out there. So what I'm gonna talk about still applies. Okay, so assuming that you have reached out to a few local meetup organizers, after trying a few different groups, let's say eventually you give your first talk or two talks, from there, maybe you wanna to start to look at speaking at conferences. And so the idea of going from a meetup to a conference is that after you've done a few talks at meetups, you'll have maybe one or two topics that you feel comfortable with that you could reasonably propose to speak on at a conference. And so you're going to use those topics that you have under your belt already to craft a CFP. Now, a CFP is a call for a proposal, and that's basically just what conferences do to say, hey, we're accepting ideas for talks or talk submissions. And so you just go on, you can fill out uh, the CFP and hopefully get in to speak at a conference. When you're starting out though, I recommend that you start locally. So for example, with me, I spoke at a few meetups here where I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, and we also have a great developer conference called All Things Open, and I applied to speak at that about a year after I first got here and managed to do it, thankfully. The advantage of applying to speak at a local conference is that you probably know people that know the organizer, and so you can reach out to your network and hopefully get a foot in the door with the organizer, which will increase your chance of being able to speak. So you'll wanna reach out to your network and ask them to put in a good word with the organizer. So that's the basis of the formula, is kind of start small and grow from there. The nature of this is that giving talks kind of leads to giving more talks. And the important thing at the beginning is just to be persistent. So like I said, it may take a few tries to get the first meetup talk in. And from there you can recycle your material, refine it, make it better, maybe take it to a different meetup, maybe travel a little bit, maybe there's one a couple hours away, you can go give the same talk there. So you see where I'm going here. The point is just to get reps, get talks under your belt and eventually you get better and better and that will lead to more opportunities. This strategy will work, but it takes time. If your first conference submission doesn't work out, then just keep doing meetups and eventually something will land for you. Another great way to get a lot of reps in is to run a meetup. So I mentioned that I ran a meetup before and that the biggest pain was finding people to speak. So if you run a meetup, the odds are that you're gonna have to fill in for yourself at some point. And so just by nature of running the meetup, you're going to get more reps in for your speaking. And it can also be potentially a nice platform uh, for meeting people, for expanding your network, and also trying out new material that you wanna work on, that you wanna speak on. And so it just gives you a bunch of opportunities in exchange for putting in that hard work to put on the meetup for everyone. Organizing is a great way to support your local developer community and like I said, get some reps in too. Which is a good segue into the other benefits of speaking, of which there are many. I mentioned them at the beginning, the three big buckets. So let's start with grow professionally. So you grow professionally when you speak, that's fairly obvious, but the reason why isn't quite as obvious. And the reason is that most people don't do public speaking. Because most people don't do public speaking, there is a certain kind of magic in it that I think is really, really special. And that is that you could basically speak on anything and you will be seen as an authority in general, not just on that thing. Because most people don't speak, so people assume that the people who do speak must know what they're talking about because you're up in front of this group and you're saying stuff and it probably makes sense and so, why wouldn't we trust you? Why wouldn't we believe that you're really competent and good at what you do? And that's basically how it works, is that you 
end up speaking and people just assume that you're great. And so you kind of benefit from this dynamic where people don't speak. And so there's just huge opportunities for the people that are willing to get up in front of a crowd and just give your thoughts on whatever the topic is. When you speak by default, you're seen as someone that knows what they're talking about, who is legit, and it leads to all kinds of great stuff. Every year that I've been promoted has been a year where I've been giving talks, and I don't think that is a surprise. It really impresses people. And there is work that goes into it, but the level of benefit relative to the level of work that you put in is crazy. That's what makes speaking so special from a professional perspective. In addition to growing professionally, you grow personally. And so most people are scared to talk in front of an audience, even the people that like speaking at conferences and meetups are scared sometimes to speak in front of an audience. I've done a fair number of talks and it's always nerve wracking no matter what, even though I know it's gonna be fun, I know I'm gonna meet people, I know I'm gonna feel great afterwards, kind of like having just run a marathon or something. Even those people that speak all the time get nervous. And so if you can push through the nerves and the anxiety and the pressure of preparing and submitting CFPs and doing all this work, there is just a bounty of personal growth, not only professional growth, but personal growth that's kind of on the other side of all that. And I think uh, the cool thing for me in doing all this kind of stuff has just been seeing how I've grown as a person. And so that's another way that you grow from doing speaking. And last, but certainly not least, your community grows, your network grows. You get exposed to all kinds of new people that are great at what they do, that are fun to hang out with. And so when you speak, you end up meeting the other speakers, you end up meeting the people that come to the event. And if you're like me and you kind of find it awkward to meet people at a meetup and everyone's eating and you're trying to like shake hands and stuff, I guess not anymore with COVID and it's online, so I guess that's not relevant. But in our former lives, when we did that and we went and we ate pizza and we tried to meet people, I always found it a little bit awkward. And as an introvert, it wasn't my favorite thing in the world. But when you're the speaker, this crazy thing happens where people come up to you after you talk. Maybe you said something and someone has a question or an opinion they want to express. People end up coming to you. And so it's pretty cool from my perspective because you end up having to not do a lot of the work to meet people because people are drawn to the speakers and want to chat with them about whatever their topic was. And so that for me has been a really cool side effect. In addition, you end up just getting to talk to more people, you meet more people. And I've formed um, some pretty cool relationships, friendships from going to meetups. Um, one of the first meetups I ever went to resulted in a friendship that I still have to this day. And so it just pays tons of dividends beyond just personal and professional growth. The relationship aspect is really what's cool. And so that's a third thing to consider when thinking about, should I really put in the effort to speak? Yes, you will meet awesome people and it will be totally worth it. So a caveat with all this is that does it still apply in the pandemic? And so I would say yes. I think most events have moved online. And so you miss out on some of that interpersonal interaction, like I said, that you had before where you're eating the pizza, trying to meet people, trying to talk to people. I think a lot of that's online. But assuming that we move back to quote unquote normal eventually, it'll still apply. I think it still applies now. So you can still reach out to meetup organizers, even if the event's online, they still are gonna need people to speak. The kinds of growth that you experience, in my opinion, still apply, and you can still meet people, even though it may be a little bit harder. And so I would say, if you're thinking about this, if you're a developer, start speaking, start sharing what you know. There's always someone that can benefit from what you know. That's why I do these videos. I assume somebody out on internet land gets value from them, even if it's just one person, it's worth it. So if you're thinking about speaking, go ahead and do it. Get in touch with a meetup organizer as you're watching this, right after this. Go on meetup, reach out, come up with what you think you could talk about, and I promise that great things await on the other side of that. So I hope you find this helpful. Thanks so much for watching to the end. Subscribe if you want and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.